Hi everyone, it's really great to welcome you to our online service for Christmas. Last week our theme was the Song of Mary. We were looking at the Magnificat and in our series Preparing the Way for Jesus, today we're looking at the Song of Zechariah the Benedictus. Fran will be preaching for us, Beverly is reading, and Audrey has prepared the intercessions. But first, at this really special time of year, let's still ourselves, our hearts and our minds as we come prepared to worship our God. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us again to kneel in wonder at heaven-touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise this day as we worship you, our Saviour and our God. In the name of Jesus, who came to earth and died for us. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And our first carol today is, O Little Town of Bethlehem. It's a version from Songs of Praise, so I do hope you'll join in.
The reading is taken from Luke 1, verses 67 to 79, Zachariah's song. His father, Zachariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, everybody. Well, we're in the last moments of Advent, our time of preparation in every way for the time that we remember the birth of Jesus on Christmas Day. It's been hard work getting this far this year, hasn't it? And we all still feel the apprehension, all the wondering about what will happen and all the anxiety about 2022. This is how the ancient people of Israel felt all the time 2000 years ago. Their country was under occupation by the Romans and the people had been waiting for hundreds of years to hear from their God who used to speak all the time through prophets about what God was going to do to bring them salvation from their occupiers. The prophecies had been clear and hindsight is a wonderful thing, isn't it? That one day a Messiah would come. The books of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Joel, Ezekiel, Micah are full of these prophecies, but for 400 years there had been silence from God. That's how it seemed. Certainly plenty of time to forget that God had promised that kind of Messiah that Jesus turned out to be. Zechariah, who we've heard about this evening, was a faithful serving priest, and as such, he would have known all the books of the law and the prophets. He had just become a father in very old age, a miracle that was told him by an angel in the same way that Mary, the mother of Jesus, had been told. Because he, not surprisingly, had disbelieved the angel's words about his wife getting pregnant, the angel had told him he wouldn't be able to speak until the child was born which sure enough is what happened. So when he and Elizabeth, his wife, went to take the baby to the temple after eight days, the custom of all Jewish children, and in response to the people saying, what will your child become? He starts to speak and out of his mouth comes this most marvelous song. Now, what do you like about Christmas the most? Since I was a little girl, one of my favourite things is singing carols. One of the hardest things about last year was not being able to sing with others at this time of year. And to lead others this year in these wonderful songs has been a highlight, even with all the anxieties around it. I help lead worship in our church most weeks and as such, I've sung many different kinds of songs, some very worshipful and some not so much. If you were to ask me, what is the kind, the best kind of worship song? I will say it has to have three things at its core. Firstly, 
it has to be about God. That is, it needs to be focused on the one who created music, singing, poetry and created creativity that we all have the potential to have. Secondly, it's great when the Bible truths are told or a Bible story is included in some way in the song. And thirdly, the song should come from a relationship with God through his Holy Spirit. Now I think Christmas carols have all of that. Take while shepherds watch their flocks by night. Each verse of this carol tells a bit of the story of the shepherds hearing about Jesus being born, in great detail actually, ending with a praise verse to God, all glory be to God on high and to the earth be peace. Or maybe hark the herald angels sing, which speaks about Jesus coming down to earth and God becoming man. Clothed in flesh the Godhead see, hail the incarnate deity. Sounds quite difficult to understand, but it just means that God became a human being to save the humans that he created. Or one of my all-time favourites, once in Royal David City. And our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love. For that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above. This tells us that Jesus saved us, giving up all that he had in heaven to give us eternal life. Zachariah's song is that kind of worship song. Luke tells us that he is filled with the Holy Spirit and he prophesies. That is, his words come from a deep relationship with his God and come out of what God wants for his newborn child and is ultimately about God's son, Jesus. In Church of England and actually Catholic terms, this song is known as the Benedictus and goes alongside the two other prophetic and thankful songs around Jesus's birth. The Magnificat sung by Mary when the angel tells her about being the mother of the Messiah and the Nunc Dimittis, which is the song sung by Simeon, the priest who welcomes and blesses Jesus as a small child in the temple. Zachariah sings about redemption, saving us from ourselves, giving us the chance to have new lives, which was the ancient covenant between God and his people. Redemption just means a picture of releasing a prisoner or liberating a slave. The Jewish people had become slaves in Egypt and in their oppression, they called out to God, who through Moses redeemed them and set them free from their slavery. When Zacharias sung that God had come to redeem his people, he was saying that in a baby called Jesus, God himself was present and that through that baby, Israel would be freed from their oppression once more. In Jesus, God acts to save us. Zachariah sings about how we can serve God because of his salvation. We can be holy and do right because God himself will come to earth and show us what to do and how to be. And then the second part of his song is about his son, John the Baptist, who goes on to prepare the way for Jesus by setting out how the people can turn away from the sin in their lives and how God has mercy on the people he originally made. His song talks about Jesus, who is the rising sun, who will shine on those living in darkness and guide our feet in the way of peace. This Christmas, with all its uncertainties and difficulties, we need redemption and salvation. We need freedom from those things that stop us from living the life that God has planned for us all from the day we were born. We have a fairly new grandson called Reuben. His name means 
Behold a son. A baby boy is a big thing in our family as around Christmas many years ago many of you will know that Paul and I lost a little boy, our firstborn son called Simon. Just as he was so precious to us in his short life, so Reuben is so precious too, along with his big sister Alice. We all felt like singing when they were both born. As we read those words of Zechariah together again, may you feel some of that joy, the joy of a new father, the joy of a priest seeing God fulfil his promises, and the joy of God's salvation in all our lives. Let me read another song this time from the Celtic tradition, a prayer for this night of nights. This night is the eve of the great nativity, when those who are longing await his appearing. Truly his salvation is near for those who fear him, his glory shall dwell in our land. Watch and pray, for the Lord shall come. This night is born Jesus, son of the King of glory. This night is born to us, the root of our joy. This night was born Christ, the King of greatness. Amen. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, on this holy day, we remember you gave us your Son, the Lord of the universe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the Saviour of all, lying in a manger. Jesus Christ, born in a stable, we with the poor and homeless this Christmas time. Lord, we pray that they have all found somewhere to lay their head that is warm and dry today, and that they are able to have a warm meal and enjoy some company. Jesus Christ, born of Mary, be with young mothers across the world this Christmas time, those with any feelings of uncertainty about their ability to care for a newborn baby, and especially those that have given birth while infected with COVID, that both will return to good health. Jesus Christ, visited by shepherds. Lord, be with all who have to work this Christmas, hospitality workers, caregivers, nurses, doctors and police. We also pray for those who long to be in work. Lord, may the new year bring employment for them. Jesus Christ, who became a refugee, be with those who fear for their lives and take risky actions to flee their countries. Protect those in the Philippines who have not only had to deal with volcanic eruption a short while ago and are now suffering from the aftermath of hurricanes and with the threat of more on the way. Jesus Christ who healed many, be with all those who suffer in mind, body and spirit. A moment's silence now for you to bring before the Lord anyone known to you needing Christ's healing to which this Christmas. Lord, you have heard our thoughts and the people mentioned. Bring peace into these situations today. Jesus Christ, who was visited by kings bearing gifts. Be in our joy and pleasure as we open gifts today and be in our precious time spent with families. Lord, comfort and protect any for whom this day will not be a happy one, those who are not in a loving home. Jesus Christ, you gave your all to the world in the bleakness of that stable. Love was born that day, pure, undiluted love, poured out for all who call on your name. Such grace undeserved, deserves a response in the life that we lead. Forgive our ingratitude for all you have done for us. Draw us to your word. Give us a new song to sing that will resonate throughout this world and begin with us today. Amen. So I'd like to thank everyone who has taken part in our online service today. And although we don't know quite yet what the future holds in the new year, we can trust in our God who is a strong rock and a fortress for us, one in whom we can always find refuge in the uncertainties and the storms of life. 
So let's look to him afresh at this Christmas time. Our final carol today is O Come All Ye Faithful. <laughs> the Lord when he comes again find us watching and waiting and may the blessing of God Almighty the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love this Christmas time and always amen and so we go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ Amen.